Here's um, lesson one in our unit on permutations. And we're going to start out with um, the principles in organized counting. First, we need to answer the question, what is combinatorics? And really, it's a branch of mathematics that deals with ideas and methods for counting. And counting may seem like a very simple task, but it can get very complex. So if you consider examples like how many possible license plates are there in Ontario, or perhaps how many five-card hands are possible with a standard deck of cards, you can see that, holy cow, to keep track of all those different possibilities would become a very, very challenging task. So today's lesson is devoted to um, methods in organized counting, so things that we might do to keep track um, of uh, different um, combinations and permutations. So we'll use things like tree diagrams, lists, charts, Venn diagrams to help us choose and count possible um, situations. So as you will see very close to um, the, about midway through this lesson, these methods can become very, very time consuming. And so we try to rely on other methods like permutations and then commutation, com, uh, combinations to perform the calculations for us. So what are permutations? Permutations allow us to count how many arrangements can be made of a certain number of items when order matters. So with a permutation, order is important. Combinations allow, allow us to count how many selections can be made of a given number of items when order is not important. So for, um, for an example, a permutation, a time when order is important, is perhaps when you're forming postal codes. N2H6T8 is a very different postal code than H2N6T8 because they correspond to different areas of the country. And so as a result, postal codes are permutations because order, the order of the letters and the numbers is very important. A combination, on the other hand, might be perhaps if you're playing euchre and you wanted to count the number of euchre hands that you could possibly have. Well, the order of the cards in your hand is not important. All that's important is the fact that those five cards are in your hand. So combinatorics pretty much provides us with systems and techniques that we can use to calculate possible outcomes in very complex situations. These rely very heavily on logic and really only on basic algebra and, and basic counting principles. So here's... Um, our first little part, making choices at different stages. When we want to make a series of choices, really we want to determine how many different paths or how many different outcomes there are. And so to, to set us up for success here, here's example one. At breakfast, Bob can have tea, coffee, or orange juice to drink. Okay, so he's got three choices there. He can have eggs, cereal, or pancakes as his main dish. He's got three choices there. And he can have toast or hash browns as a side dish. He's got two choices there. Assuming that he wants a drink, a main, and a side, how many possible breakfasts could Bob choose from? Well, we're going to create a tree diagram so that we can visualize the different outcomes or the different breakfasts that Bob could have. And so the way that we start is we label drink, main, and side across the top. And then underneath these, we'll now list our options. So for a drink, we can have treat, we can have tea, coffee, or orange juice. And for each of these, then there's of course three main choices of sides. So, uh, sorry, there's three choices for a main dish. So we have eggs, we have cereal, and we have pancakes. And we can combine these using branches of the tree. Okay. So now if we selected coffee to drink or orange juice to drink, we'd have, of course, the same options for a main dish. And we'd select and connect all of these with um, branches of the tree diagram. Now for each of these options now, we have two choices for sides. So our choices for sides are hash browns or toast. And so say in the first example we had tea and we selected eggs as our main dish then we would have one of these two choices to choose from. And of course, those two choices exist for every single branch so far, and we connect all of these. And of course, the way that we determine how many different breakfasts we could have are that we count up the number of ends of the tree. So basically, we go down the list and we say, okay, 
well, how many ways does this tree diagram end? And it turns out that there's 18 ways that the tree diagram ends. And so we have 18 total breakfast choices. Let's do another example with a tree diagram. Deidre wishes to purchase a new car. She has the choice of a two-door or a four-door. She can select from standard or automatic. And she can have a white, red, or gray exterior. So let's draw a tree diagram and figure out the number of selections. So how many different cars could she make from these choices? So she'd have a choice of doors, she has a choice of transmission, and she has a choice of color. And for doors, we can pick two-door or we can pick four-door. And for each of those choices, then we, of course, have the um, transmission, which is standard or automatic. And it would be there for both two doors and four doors. And then for each of these, we have a choice of three colors, gray, white, or red. And so we can complete our tree diagram. And then, of course, count the number of final arms here, fi total branches we'd have. We have 12 car choices. Now, if to reach this desired outcome, we need to make a first choice and a second choice and a third choice and so on and so on, then we multiply the number of choices at each stage to calculate the total number of outcomes. And so this is called the fundamental counting principle. So in this case, we had two choices in stage one, we had two choices in stage two, and we had three choices in stage three. And so two times two times three is, of course, 12. And that's the fundamental counting principle, which is going to be very helpful when our situation becomes too big to do tree diagrams. So the fundamental counting principle says that if a task or a process is made up of stages with separate choices at each stage, the total number of choices is m times n times p, where m is the number of choices in the first stage, n is the number of choices in the second stage, and p is the number of choices in the third stage, and so on. So here's example three. In your first year of university, you get a co-op job for the summer, and it requires you to dress professionally each day. So you, let's assume that you don't have a lot of clothing that suits those purposes, but you do have the following items. You've got four different shirts, you've got three pairs of dress pants, five ties, and two pairs of dress shoes. So if you must wear a shirt and a tie and pants and shoes, how many possible out outfits can you create? So we have the number of outfits is equal to, well, how many options did we have for shirts? We had four. How many options did we have for ties? We had five. For pants, we had three options, and for shoes, we had two options. Multiplying these together, we have 120 total outfits to choose from. What if your supervisor, though, is a little bit more flexible and then gives you the option of wearing a tie or not wearing a tie? Now, how many options do we have? Well, with a tie, we just solved this in part A. Without a tie, though, let's just remove ties as an option. And so here, the number of outfits that we have without a tie are, well, we've got four pairs of dress shirts, or four dress shirts, excuse me, three pairs of pants, and two pairs of shoes. And so here, we only have 24 options. And of course, the question becomes now, well, you can't wear a tie and not wear a tie at the same time. So those events are called mutually exclusive. Two events that can occur at the same time are called mutually exclusive. And when those mutually exclusive events are both things that are desirable, because here we can wear a tie or we cannot wear a tie, it doesn't matter, we add their outcomes instead of multiplying their outcomes because this, total, this finds the total number of possibilities of one or the other occurring. And this is known as the, as the additive counting principle. So the number of possible outfits with or without a tie is 120 plus 24, which is 144 outfits.